What's up friends? I'm gonna show you how I built this and why it has become my favorite trellis for all things summer produce. And I know everyone says this, but stick around to the end because I have tips there. This trellis is gonna use regular eight foot two by fours and we're gonna rip them in half. Since a two by four is actually three and a half inches wide, we're measuring over an inch and three quarters to find that center point. Make at least three marks spaced down the board and then using something long and straight, mark a line down the middle. If you don't have anything that long, you can use something shorter and just connect the lines working your way down until you have the center line completely marked. Or grab another board that is relatively straight and use that to help mark your center line. I've gotten in the habit of using my circular saw for everything, but if you have a table saw, this part will be very easy. For the rest of us, grab your saw and do your best to make a nice, long, straight cut. Now, I don't use 2 by 2s because I've never seen a straight one, and usually once it gets in the sun, it immediately bows. So just get a nice straight 2 by 4 and you have a lot better results. Now, I'm making a bunch of these for my garden, so I'm ripping down a bunch of wood, but if you want to just make one, then you're gonna need to buy two 2x4s two and you'll end up with an extra piece that you can set aside for something down the road like another trellis. I'm spraying this with a wood preserver, which is linked down in my description. It's definitely optional, but I had some left over from building my garden beds and decided to use it. This prevents them from rotting and then also makes a uh, nice brownish gray patina on them, which I really like. Before heading into the garden, we're gonna cut these down to length. I usually cut these between six and seven feet, depending on where they're gonna go. I think six feet is a minimum for high climbing vines like tomatoes, but for this one, I did six and a half feet and then cut off the ends with my saw while leaving your top piece uncut at eight feet. These green posts are U posts and I recommend you use the five foot lengths. The reason I like this method is because number one, it looks nice and number two, it's cheaper than buying really tall metal posts. I've seen some trellis systems that are like almost $400 and if that's your thing, then go for it. But I have beer taste on a beer budget, so I'm trying to garden as inexpensively as I can and I think you should too. So take your rip down two by four and use that to help set your U post as straight and level as possible and then using a hammer, bang it to set it in. The U-Posts have those wings at the bottom, which is what stabilizes them in the soil. And in a raised bed, I try and get those down into the native soil at least a foot. So overall, there's about three feet sticking out of the ground from my soil line of my raised bed. Now continue to use your wood as you drive in your posts to make sure the spacing is right and that it's going down nice and straight, and then make any adjustments as needed. Definitely take your time on this because how level things are now will determine on how the final product looks. Once those are set, use some exterior rated screws to attach the wood to the U-post. The wood is basically resting on the soil, maybe down an inch or two so it's supported just a little bit. Now get your wood set and then only screw in the top one. Then you can make any adjustments that you need to to make sure it's nice and plumb up and down and sits nice and straight. Once you're happy with it, then set the other two screws and you're all done. So clearly you can see here, they're not really straight and they need some adjustments, but just, just hold on. Put the top on and attach one side with a screw. Now pull out your level or eyeball it and then tweak that side till it's exactly where you want it. You'll be able to use the top piece to push or pull the posts around to make any adjustments. So push or pull depending on which way it needs to go and then when you have it where you need it, screw in the other side to lock everything in. You want the width at the bottom to be the same width as the top so it's a nice even square and then cut off whatever is left hanging over from the top piece. If the top isn't level, just give the high side a few whacks with your hammer so it's looking good and where you want it. Next, pull out your preferred string of choice and begin winding this back and forth between each post. Using this method, you're gonna force your main tomato stems to grow in between the loops, and that's what's going to support it. It's kind of a modified Florida weave method, and if you want to do a proper Florida weave, then weave your little heart out. But for me, this works the best, and I think every eight to 12 inches is adequate, and string it all the way till you get to the top. Now, the best thing this system offers is that it's supported at the top and so versatile. If you only use vertical posts, as you get to the top, you pull those posts in with the string and it causes them to lean and the string at the bottom loosens up and your plants begin to sag. With this, you can pull it really tight and everything stays sturdy and tight all the way up. You could also string them from the top and use clips if that's your preferred method. You could use nets for peas or cucumbers. I mean, it's so versatile and there's so many ways to use this.
So a few things to clarify on the trellis before you move on. Now the screws that I use are these Deckmate screws and I really like them. That's what is available at Home Depot. What I used on the legs right here, attaching the U-post to the wood is a inch and five eighth. And then to attach the top, two two and a half inch screw of the same kind is just perfect. Now the string that I used here to wind this all up is construction masonry string line. The reason I like it is because you can pull it very, very tight. And so when you get to the top, you can pull it really tight and the bottom will not loosen. So it's sturdy, it'll last a long time because it's synthetic and it's very cheap. This was $15 and I've done one, two, three trellises with it and I'm gonna do a fourth. So you can probably get six trellises out of this for 15 bucks, pretty good deal. And you can reuse it probably forever. If you use a hammer like I did, you're gonna bend it like that. To avoid this, you could use a piece of scrap wood, which will prevent that from happening. For me, I just don't really care. And the final thing is how these U-posts actually get put in the ground. So you can see here that there's a gap between this and the U-post in the wood, and that's just going to happen inevitably. It's really hard to get it perfectly upright, and it's not a problem if it is. I can tell you this, it is very sturdy. I mean, if you go and rock it, it's going to rock, but as far as its movement side to side, and its purpose is to hold up tomatoes. So I'm not gonna go crazy with it from a structural standpoint. I want it to be level, somewhat plumb, and sturdy enough to hold tomatoes while getting enough height, and that's what this is. And you can see how I did this one with the wood next to there, and the one further down I did with the U-post against the wood. I think that this method with this against this is the best way to do it. It seems like it tilts a little bit less and it is a little bit more challenging to install because with that, you can just drive the U-post down. With this, you have to make the gap appropriate. If I go down to this next one on the other side, you can see how I did my best to get that as close as possible, but it did lean a tiny little bit. I can get over that. So the point of me telling you this is just so that you know that either way will work just fine, but I do think this is a better method. So you just have to have enough space between your U-post being driven in and your edge of your bed to for your wood. With this method too, you could also drive a screw through the face of your bed if you wanted to, to attach to the wood to give it a little bit more strength. Not necessary in my opinion, but if you want to, you could. Now, I really hope that you liked this video and that it was helpful for you. And I hope you try to build this. I think it's a fantastic way to trellis things. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Obviously, if you are so disgusted that this video exists and you hate me for it, then let the whole world know that you hate it down in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you on the next one.